It's time to get excited about 2019. And to do just that, I'm gonna spotlight the top 10 blockbusters, top 10 wildcard movies, and for the very first time, the top 10 family movies. Oh, how Hollywood is changing. Uh, so of course though, we're still gonna start with, the, with its uh, primo engine these days, and that's blockbusters. Although I do think family movies are, uh, are right behind blockbusters these days. Uh, but these are the movies, the blockbusters, that really light a fire under moviegoers, and therefore also the box office. But what's even more interesting is that these blockbusters have driven interest in the movie business to an all-time high, which has proven to be a real double-edged sword for the studios. They're like, stop looking over our shoulder and having such high standards. <laughs> okay. And also, of course, uh, while well, streaming has also really put the pressure on Hollywood because no, they're no longer the only entertainment game in town uh, when it comes to, well, you know, really high caliber uh, entertainment. All right, so anyway, but these movies are Hollywood's best foot forward in 2019. So without further ado, here's my list of, again, the top 10 blockbusters for 2019. Number one is Avengers Endgame. Duh! <laughs> yes, Marvel delivered a genuine cliffhanger ending with Infinity War, and audiences can't wait to see how the MCU now caps off 10 years. This is the true ending, because, you know, Infinity War was just the first part of a story. But also, this is the Russo brothers' last Marvel movie, and they gotta go out with a bang, right? I mean, of all the directors that Kevin Feige has hired, only the Russos have, have rivaled him, Feige, in terms of business savvy. Remember, Thanos demands your silence? They construct their movies so that they can not only be you know, watched by fans multiple times, but they can be broken down and discussed, uh, you know, in the, in the run-up to the movie. They really understand the fanboy and fangirl mentality. And therefore, they not only can create amazing fan experiences for us, <laughs> but they also know how to whip us into a frenzy. Case in point, the two most watched trailers in the first 24 hours of all time are Russo Brother uh, movies. Now, I know Marvel's a factor there as well, but you don't see anybody else at, the, uh, at Marvel Studios uh, being able to enjoy the same success. I would almost say that the Russos are the new James Cameron. James Cameron also having an incredible ability to tap into what audiences want. Uh, I think so far, though, if you look at their non-Marvel work, the Russo brothers really only understand the Marvel fan, but that's a pretty uh, significant achievement. Uh, and uh, I would also like to point out that as far as the James uh, Cameron comparison goes, they did manage to break into his very exclusive $2 billion club. All right, so two, the other franchise to, to join him there is Star Wars Episode Nine, And I know a lot of you might be ticked off to see this movie so high up on my list. But here's the thing. Kathleen Kennedy might have divided the fandom, uh, aggressively so, but she's, we gotta be fair here, she's still three for four when it comes to getting her movies into the billion dollar club. Uh, we don't know yet if Solo was the new, her new reality or an abnormality. Uh, plus, because this is the last installment in the Disney trilogy, so we should be getting some answers. Uh, so if you add to that a final goodbye to Carrie Fisher, the return of OG Lando, and then somehow Luke Skywalker is still involved in all this, good luck, J.J. Abrams, uh, Ryan Johnson didn't exactly make it easy for you but Disney might be able to convince Star Wars fans to at least finish what they started. And by that, I mean the trilogy. Or the bo boycott, as it's being threatened, could be fully operational by that point, and we will witness the biggest revolt in Hollywood history by a fandom. <laughs> so yeah, either way, this is a very important space to watch. All right, number three, IT Chapter Two. The fact that a small film, comparison-wise, to all these other big Marvel and DC movies, could be at number three on this list is certainly impressive. But it is that kind of kind of a movie. It made a, a huge. It became a huge pop culture sensation when it uh, debuted, and a large part of that was that inconceivably, uh, Billy Skarsgård could actually hold a candle to Tim Curry's iconic performance. Remember, we were like, "Yeah, he'll never be as good," and he was amazing. Uh, now, not only does the original cast return for the second chapter, uh, but they're joined by a mix of big name favorites uh, that are, you know, James McAvoy, Bill Hader, how exciting, but then also a couple of new faces that might see their, their uh, stars in Hollywood float. 
All right, number four, Spider-Man Far From Home. Yes, Amy Pascal hopes to keep swinging, uh, swinging high with her Spider-Man empire after an amazing 2018. And with internet darlings Tom Holland and Zendaya, the internet just loves them, particularly Tom Holland. It's like Ariana Grande level of love, although that doesn't always translate into ticket dollars, uh, although he hasn't really tested himself outside of comic book movies just yet. That's the real test of if you're an actual star or just like a social media star uh, or in a specific franchise kind of star. Anyway, but people like Tom Holland quite a bit. Tom Holland and Zendaya are being joined by a fanboy favorite, Jake Gyllenhaal, who certainly gives the movie some fanboy cred. Because, uh, you know, fans are always a little bit, some fans just can't get over Sony having Spider-Man. And so Jake Gyllenhaal, I think, helps in that regard. But Amy Pascal is also getting yet another toy from the MCU to play with. Uh, so it would seem that Spider-Man Far From Home can't miss, especially since it's webbed the coattails of Avengers Endgame. The number five is Captain Marvel. Joke as we might about Brie Larson's wooden, act, wooden acting, and she makes it so easy. This is still a major milestone for the MCU, the franchise to beat these days, and that's just, I think, inarguable, as much as it might annoy some people. It's just a fact. The MCU is on fire, and this is their first standalone female-led movie. Very, very important uh, moment. And it's not just the introduction of an important, powerful character who's likely an important, well, they, we've been promised she's an important factor in Avengers Endgame, although it didn't rate the first trailer. Uh, but there's also a conflict, the Kree scroll war here that we're gonna learn about that I think is likely to have repercussions throughout phase four. Then on top of that, you have a semi-origin story for Nick Fury and sparkly VFX, uh, even if they're not always 100% believable, but it sure is pretty to look at. So Marvel could have a genuine challenger for Wonder Woman's box office crown. I'm not feeling it just yet, but never, as we've learned, never underestimate Marvel, especially at the box office. Their fandom, they really do, I think, in some ways have the best fans in the world. They're aggressive, boy. Okay, number six, Shazam. Uh, cause he, and here's DC, whoo, number six. Uh, I mean, Wonder Woman was supposed to come out this year and it would have been very high on this list, but they blinked. Uh, I hope that, I hope at the very least they do end up saving the movie. And maybe the DCEU? I got some more uh, intel uh, further backing up what I talked about with it being a soft reboot. All right, anyway, number six, Shazam. Uh, it's a Christmas movie in April, uh, House Shane Black. Uh, but anyway, many of us did laugh at this movie too, right? We were like, what a stupid idea. But the difference here, uh, unlike with Captain Marvel, is that the first trailer for Shazam had pretty much everyone do a complete 180. Suddenly, Big the Superhero movie seems like a really good idea, not a bad pitch at all. And cult favorite Zachary Levi might finally be able to leap to the big screen. Uh, remember Chuck? He's been, he's been really, uh, he's been very patient with his career. You gotta give it to him uh, there. The only questions though, and that's why this isn't higher up on this list, is if A, audiences are still into the DCEU come April 2019, I'm, I'm having a hard time getting over the lack of respect for Aquaman. You don't have to love the film, but you don't have to trash it either. Um, people just, some people just, some people really love Marvel and some people just really hate DC. It's crazy. And then also, B, if such a zany character really can be part of the DCEU at large, no matter how successful he is. I don't know if Shazam can stand next to Wonder Woman and Aquaman and however else they fix the rest of the DCEU. All right, so number seven. Hobbs and Shaw. Now, the interesting thing here is whether or not Dwayne Johnson really can steal the Fast and Furious franchise away from Vin Diesel. Never should have picked that fight, Vin Diesel. Dwayne Johnson's coming for you. Because if this movie is successful, this spinoff, I don't think Johnson's gonna be looking in his rear view mirror at the rest of the Fast and Furious cast members uh, as he drives off and leaves them at the last rest stop. Uh, here, in this, again, in this spinoff, uh, Johnson and Jason Statham are the only one to make it out of there. I guess Jason, you know, Jason Statham, I guess, was very nice to Dwayne Johnson on that, that horrible, horrible filming experience. But they're joined by Mission Impossible Fallout's Vanessa Kirby playing Statham's sister. Love it. Uh, and Idris Elba is the big bad. Idris Elba, why don't you get more work? And here's hoping the third time's the charm for director David Leach, who so far in his solo career just misses the mark, like every time. And he has such great material to work with. I'm starting to think it's you, David Leach. 
All right, number eight, Jumanji. Here's Dwayne Johnson again. Yes, after a handful of, let's be kind here and say, smaller movies in 2018, Johnson is looking to pump some serious box office in 2019 with what have become his two signature franchises. Now, the last Jumanji was a surprise hit. Boy, was it a hit. Almost a billion dollars. Deservedly so, though. Great movie. And we'll see, though, if Sony and the filmmakers know how to make lightning strike twice. And once again, Jumanji will be doing battle with Star Wars. And last round, they turned out to be surprisingly well matched. Uh, and I think these days, a lot of people even, you know, even more so will be rooting for Jumanji in that matchup. Oh, that's going to be a really interesting December. All right, the number nine, Glass. Speaking of comebacks, is M. Night Shyamalan still enjoying his? Or has his infamous hubris finally caught up to him once again. Yeah, the guy's got a huge ego. It derailed his career. He would not take studio notes. And he just, you know, he, he just went down the rabbit hole. Uh, but yeah, in that rap, you know, what the, twist, he came from a good place. You know, he was, he was the master of twist endings and they just got too twisty. Uh, but he still, he lived up to that initial legend with Split. You know, he went back to basics and he had a great simple twist ending to that film when it turned out to be a surprise sequel to one of Shia Mullen's cult hits, Unbreakable. And impressively, even in today's nostalgia heavy Hollywood, uh, Shia Mullen was able to bring back, uh, you know, Bruce Willis and uh, Samuel L. Jackson. Samuel L. Jackson having plenty of other things that he could be doing and Bruce Willis, a little difficult, uh, you know, he's a zany guy, uh, but he was able to bring them back to reprise their roles from Unbreakable 18 years later. And I gotta say, Unbreakable, not very well received when it first came out. It was like the beginning of the, of the downturn for M. Night Shyamalan. So my question here is, and this is why this isn't higher up on the list, well, audiences are into revived franchises for sure, I don't know if Unbreakable is one of those franchises anyone wants to have come back. I mean, this could be some, I mean, we'll see. I think it's gonna be a big hit, but you know, well, I, I'm not quite sure because again, that first film, not huge. Uh, even Split, did, Split did very well, but not like at the same level of the other movies on this list. All right, so number 10, the final, uh, final blockbuster for 2019 that, that I think we should be really excited about is Godzilla King of Monsters. Uh, breathe a sigh of relief, kaiju fans. Uh, but speaking of missing the mark, Legendary has yet to hit a bullseye with their kaiju movies. Authentic and ripoff. <laughs> but this time, they might have a secret weapon in Stranger Things star Millie Bobby Brown, unless she's already turned into the new Anne Hathaway. But Anne Hathaway is back to being kind of likable again, so don't give up, Millie. Uh, so far, fans have been impressed with not just Godzilla for this upcoming film, but his entire entourage of monsters. The posters are pretty sweet. And with China's Zhang Zi and Japan's Ken Watanabe returning, plus, of course, Godzilla originating from Japan's Toho Studios, well, the Asian box office for this film could be particularly monstrous. So that's my list of the top 10 blockbusters to look forward to in 2019. I'm curious to hear your thoughts and own lists down below. And don't forget to check out those other videos uh, like um, top 10 wild cards and top 10 family movies as they become available in the next uh, two days. Uh, and of course, as always, you can check out some other videos right now. 